Good morning, you guys. It is a beautiful Saturday morning here in Southwest Florida. We're having so much fun out in the yard. So I had been sharing some things on my Instagram stories and everybody was saying, please, a yard tour, a home tour, the solar panels, like all the things. And I can't wait to talk to you about it. So I think we're gonna do that today. I am putting our herb garden together and planting some randoms. I just put a beautiful aloe plant in a pot that I can't wait to use. Aaron's been harvesting our sweet potatoes and loving that whole process, especially since she grew them all from these tiny buds of the sweet potato on our counter. So today we are making some blueberry muffins from scratch for breakfast, and then I am gonna hightail it outside and get my hands a little dirty in the garden. We have an entire bed full of sweet potatoes to dig up and carrots, so I cannot wait. We're also gonna turn over the beds and get them ready for our fall planting, which we're excited about because the season in Florida is opposite of the rest of the US pretty much because it's so deathly hot here in the summer. So back home in Nebraska, this is when we'd be getting all of our leafy greens and bell peppers and cherry tomatoes and watermelon and sweet corn. But here, things happen a little bit earlier and then by summertime, you have to let everything just kind of set because it's too hot to grow. So we'll be back at it in about September. In the meantime though, I'm also excited to get an herb garden planted. We've got a really nice shaded spot and we're gonna plant all kinds of herbs that are within easy reach right by the kitchen. If you want our healthy homemade muffin recipe, it's in the meal planner. It's the strawberry banana muffin recipe, but you can also add whatever other fruits you want. Ready out, here it comes out, <laughs> garden. Hey mama. Hey, that's a real Whoa. healthy, this is a garnet. There's more in here. Yep. Dad, you my sweetie. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Oh. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Max, come here. What did we just see? That is a snake. Is it like the coolest thing to see snakes? Yeah. We just got out of the pool. We're having so much fun. And we're hearing some thunder. So we're super excited. We might get a thunderstorm and we seriously need it. Everything is really hot and dry right now. But quick, I wanted to show you guys the trees and our flowers back here. Probably my favorite is jasmine. These vines are amazing. They grow like a vine, like a weed. I put these two trellises up and I just love how they take over. And then I've got a few hanging pots back here that are also just beautiful. But these, you guys, are my favorite. This is Mandevilla, another vining flower, but they are always blooming and they're so, so beautiful. My other favorites are, of course, hibiscus. We've got some canna lilies. We've got some gardenia that I really love. And then we've got a few different varieties of bird of paradise. So we've got these big white bird of paradise. We've got the orange bird of paradise. We've got some yellow bird of paradise and it's just so cool. I've also planted a huge row of bamboo for privacy between us and the neighbors, and it's coming in really thick. And I've been trimming it down to encourage it to grow thicker instead of taller. So this is gonna be a beautiful privacy hedge really soon. So I also just recently got these stone steppers. I haven't actually set them yet, so they're kind of wonky. I need to get them set and spread my mulch around them nicely. I also have some really pretty flowering ginger plants back here, some lemongrass that is taking off. We can cook with it, it's good for keeping the bugs away. We've got a key lime tree back here, we've got a mulberry tree, a star fruit tree, something called mutinga, which I think is cotton candy fruit. We've never had it, but the people at Fruitscape said it's amazing, so we put one in the ground. Something else I really love are these Chinese fan palms. So they're also growing like mad. And then of course we've got our Monstera. I planted some by the base of this coconut tree because I wanted it to grow up the tree because it's just the most amazing thing. I actually have this tattooed on my arm. Then we've got some giant alocasia, I think is how you say it. These are like the elephant ears and they get so massive. And again, of course they're growing like weeds here in this perfect climate. We actually have quite a bit of stuff. I could go on and on. My favorites, of course, are the ferns. It makes everything feel like Jurassic Park, which, of course, 
Max loves. Max, what's your favorite movie? Jurassic World and Jurassic Park like are by far our favorite movies. So we're trying to create this Jurassic World vibe back here. We've got pet lizards. We're feeding the lizards, trying to keep them around. We've got bird feeders. We get cardinals like crazy. Also trying to get hummingbirds, but we haven't seen any yet. I'm no doubt planting so many flowers. Some of my favorites are these yellow alamanda and of course the plumeria or frangipani. Dad, look, it's right here, Daddy, Daddy. Oh, wow, pretty. So, yes, I'm on the other side of the house. I got what we wished for. We've got a little bit of sun, but we also have rain. It's the weirdest thing here in Florida. It'll be sunny skies and raining at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. I'm out here harvesting some figs. We just picked the biggest fig yesterday. It was like bursting open, and it was like the size of a baseball. We planted these papayas, like maybe two months ago and they were like I don't know maybe a foot tall now they're no joke like three and a half feet tall we got our first batch of mangoes just a few weeks ago that were no joke the best mangoes we've ever had we've got avocado we've got banana trees we've got a jackfruit tree starfruit tree our fig tree right here we've got mulberries in the back we've got passion fruit vines we've got a dragon fruit vine a couple of lang lang trees which are the most amazing smell we talked about these back in costa rica it's the smell they use for chanel number no. five so again just feeling super super blessed but the thing that actually brought us here besides the tropical climate and the ability to grow our own food tropical fruit things like that was this home we did have solar panels installed we used this company right here our friends Jen and Diego from Orlando are amazing. And the builder, Pablo, and his wife, Pilar, who did our house, are also amazing. They're with Efficient Developments. We have actually teamed up with them. We're building our own houses with them because we are so in love with our home and the concept. So we've got the solar panels. We have the certified green home status here in Florida. I've got rain barrels catching water. We do not have ground sprinklers. Fortunately, we usually get enough rain for that but for my plants flowers and garden i have set up a drip line system which is highly highly efficient so this runs on a timer for just a few minutes a couple times a day and there is no evaporative loss which happens a lot of times with sprinklers you think about how hot the sun is spraying mist into the air most of it gets evaporated at least a large part of it gets evaporated so i really wanted to hook up this drip line because it literally runs a teeny tiny hose to the base of each of my flowers and plants and waters them right where they need it again without any waste so this has been one way for us to save water i've actually also considered drilling a well with well and solar then we can pretty much be like almost off grid welcome to the garage i want to talk about this little box right here on the wall it is our static shield so when we first moved in we were so excited about the solar panels we thought we were doing like the best thing for the environment for our electric bill no joke when we first moved in they weren't quite hooked up our bill went from like 250 dollars in the summer down to like 50 so major savings we were super excited and then all of a sudden we started getting all these messages from people saying no you're gonna die you're gonna fry your family in your home because of the radiation emfs all these things associated with solar panels dirty electricity etc so we actually contacted a building biologist who gave us the whole scoop on how to clean up our home how to have solar panels but how to still have a safe emf free home and one of the products he mentioned was this static shield their products just honestly help like harmonize the home and let's be honest even if you don't have solar panels if you have things like smart meters which we all have now or smart devices also like we all have now things like printers thermostats all these things are connected to wi-fi and it's basically like a trap for this electromagnetic field that can be harmful at least disrupt things like sleep
The issue with solar panels is the inverters. So most homes run on alternating current and we with solar panels are generating direct current. So we need an inverter to convert that current, but it comes with a whole bunch of what they call dirty electricity, which is just static, it's just noise, it's irregular, right? And it's not what you want in your house, especially running through the walls next to your head where you sleep. I'm gonna show you guys some tests right now for fun and show you why I love static shield and why I believe in it. A uh, tri-filled meter is something that you guys can buy on Amazon. Now this is actually a little test shield that they send, but these things seriously work. Watch this. Okay, so you guys can see if I'm right here by this outlet, looks like that number is right around like 130, 120, 140, 150, and it's kind of like going up and down. But if I put this in between, it literally goes down to zero. Can you believe that? It's unreal. That's legitimately why we are sleeping with these things behind our heads at night because I'm confident that they are blocking what's going on in these outlets behind them. Highly, highly recommend these things. Now I'm gonna show you guys the outlets. Besides the big dog that we have hooked up next to the breaker box in the garage, they actually sent us these. So these are their pure power plugins. They basically just plug right into your outlet in the wall and then you can plug in your device on this side. This is an EMF inline monitor. It basically measures electromagnetic interference or like I said before, the dirty electricity. So I'm gonna plug this in and you can see the numbers and you can kind of hear the static. Okay, so that number, it looks like it's peaking at 141. And again, this is measuring the electromagnetic interference in millivolts. So now, watch when I put this pure power plug on. I'm gonna take this thing, simply plug it into the wall, and now look at it. Now it's at 11 millivolts, at, to whereas before it was what? At 141? It's unreal. You guys definitely need to look into this company, whether you have solar panels or not, because we all have smart meters, Wi-Fi, and EMFs bouncing around inside of our houses like crazy. And especially if you have kids like us, like I know if nothing else, it's interfering with sleep. That affects my mood, that affects my energy, and all the things. But yes, right now we are like spacemen <laughs> sleeping in this bed. We're getting a headboard to cover these up, I promise, but they actually work, so I'm not getting rid of them. So I am outside by our garden beds. We just harvested the sweet potatoes yesterday. So basically, there was just a pile of extra sweet potatoes sitting in our pantry that we had bought from Whole Foods, and one of them began to sprout, as they often do if you don't eat them soon enough. And when that sprout began to grow leaves, I very carefully plucked it off and popped it in a glass of water and allowed the roots to begin to form. When the roots formed then I was able to take multiple sprouts that I did this with and pop them into our garden bed and they literally took off that was back in February it typically takes three four sometimes five months to get your crop so if you're in a cold weather climate you're gonna know it's time to start harvesting your sweet potatoes when the leaves begin to change color but here that doesn't happen in Florida and sweet potatoes can actually just continue to grow year-round so instead you just have to kind of get some dirt under your fingernails and feel around so that's what I did and I harvested a pretty good sized sweet potato so started digging around more and thought you know what let's clear the entire bed they're all ready dug them up ended up with probably 40 sweet potatoes no joke and then this is the key you have to let them cure in a warm humid environment for about a couple weeks and this is how you get the starches to convert into sugars which takes it from a starch potato to a sweet potato we also have carrots we definitely should have thinned them out which we kind of knew needless to say we have tons and tons of very small but very tasty carrots i enjoyed some with some hummus last night so a tip for the carrots 
I picked them all and tossed them on our outdoor countertop and within minutes they were very flimsy and no, no longer crisp. In order to salvage them, I popped them in a large bowl with ice water. This took several hours, but it firmed them up. I was able to pop them in the refrigerator and now they're good to go. So when you harvest them, be ready to pull the carrot tops off, rinse them and store them immediately. Or if they begin to get flimsy, try the ice bath. This is a type of spinach. No way, I did not know we had peppers. This is so exciting. So as I was checking in to pick some more carrots, I totally did not notice until just now that our sweet peppers are finally popping off. So that is another major success. I'm so excited. Like I said, it can be difficult to plant in Florida in the summer because it's just so overwhelmingly hot and humid. But starting this September, we're gonna really dive into our greens so we can at least be making healthy salads from our own garden. So dino kale, curly kale, romaine, green leaf lettuce, arugula, which I just can't wait for because honestly, I don't know if you guys have noticed it, I've been noticing an extremely poor quality of greens at grocery stores like Whole Foods, Publix, the two main ones we go to, I'm just like so disappointed lately. They're just not good at all. Even the celery has been like pretty weak. So what have you guys noticed? Is there something I don't know about? Pop some comments below and let me know what your produce is like. The other thing I'm super excited about is our katuk. So this was one of the leafy greens that we enjoyed in Costa Rica on our retreats. The reason we love it is because it is very, very high in protein and iron. It's got like almost a nutty type of taste. It's like the perfect spinach alternative. I think it tastes so much better. So I'm really hoping it can start to take off too. So I feel like there are so many different layers to like growing and being plant-based. There are flowering plants, fruiting trees, veggie gardens, but let's say none of that is even a possibility for you guys. I would say the next step would be planting your own herb garden, either right outside or even on your countertop. But even if that's not an option or you really don't have a green thumb, sprouting is the way to go. So sprouting is the easiest, most effortless, efficient way to get the most amount of nutritional bang for your buck. Let's take broccoli, for example, one of the most potent seeds and sprouts. Broccoli contains a compound called sulforaphane, which is extremely anti-cancer. It's amazing for so many reasons. Raw broccoli contains 10 times more sulforaphane than cooked broccoli, but this is the real kicker. Broccoli sprouts contain 100 times more sulforaphane than even raw broccoli. So sprouts, think about this. Every single broccoli sprout grows into an entire head of broccoli. Think about how much more nutrition you can get, how many more heads of broccoli you can eat just by eating sprouts. If you guys wanna check out how to grow sprouts, be sure to go back and watch our interview with Doug Evans and our sprouting how-to video. It's linked below in the description, but essentially all you need to do is first and foremost, make sure you're getting organic, high germination seeds. I have two brands that I really love. This is Sprout Man. The other brand is True Leaf. These are the herbs I'm gonna be planting. So I like using a sprouting jar because I feel like the trays get really moldy and gross, but the jar allows for a lot of aeration while keeping everything contained and it's easy to drain and rinse, drain and rinse. So all you need to do is add two tablespoons of your sprouting seeds in a glass of water and allow it to soak six to eight hours. Another pro tip in keeping that harmony between us and nature, make sure to use filtered water. Then from there, just drain and rinse three times a day. You'll do that for three to seven days and watch as your sprouts take over. This whole jar will be plumb full, at which point you can rinse them and kind of let them dry a little bit. And if there's tiny hairs that start to form, those are teeny tiny root fibers. It is not mold. Just trust the process, stay consistent with draining and rinsing. Add them to an airtight container and keep them in the fridge for, I would say, no longer than five days. I always put a bunch of these on my salads, but you can also load them up in your green smoothies and they're basically undetectable. So this is the main reason we're starting our herb garden because I really hate buying these little packages and basil does not last for more than like a day or two. The only herbs that we've had success doing it this way, like a little vase of water, is cilantro and parsley. So if you do buy herbs by the bunch, like who's honestly gonna use this much cilantro or parsley? The good thing is they keep like this for two, sometimes three weeks. But like I said, every other herb, like basil and dill, a lot of them are just too delicate 
and they won't survive that way so that's why we're doing our herb garden herbs are another amazing source of very concentrated nutrition so that's why we only use a little bit of herbs as opposed to like a massive salad of kale or romaine the herbs are more of just like dust a few on for flavor and extra nutrition perfect timing this is our cutting that i got on etsy that i was just talking about so it looks like they gave us a freebie thank you that's cool this is the hawaiian pothos same one as the one dusty got the same day i ordered on etsy he bought one for ten dollars at like home depot or something so i got this for i think five dollars on etsy these are very easy to propagate yourself which we haven't done yet, but we will be trying. And then, what is the freebie? We'll have to identify. Let's use our plant app on camera so you guys can see. Picture this. Spider warts, inch plant. So I guess you could say we are really, truly plant-based in every sense of the word, not just with our budding garden and our tropical fruiting trees and tropical plants, but inside as well, we have so many house plants and they are one of the most cost-effective ways to naturally purify your air indoors. And I think one of the biggest things for us is blurring the lines between indoors and out. We've got the high ceilings, the tall windows, like I said, an abundance of color and plant life, both inside and outside. If it wasn't so hot and humid, we would honestly not even have doors to our house. It would just be open air and free flowing. Every year in Costa Rica, we get so inspired to just get back to our roots, quite literally, and get out in nature. But at the same time, we're this modern family navigating this modern day and age with all of the technology and the things that can either be harmful and scary or beneficial and empowering, depending on how you look at them and how you utilize technology. I think for us, we've moved beyond this fear mongering that you see on so much of social media about the harmful effects of EMFs and radiation and all of those things. And we've begun to look for simple solutions that can make it so that we can be this modern family who is also very eco-conscious, living a sustainable lifestyle, and again, living in as much harmony with nature as possible. So we really love things like, yes, having house plants, but also having our air doctor, air purifier to help us breathe the cleanest air. And the same with we don't have a fresh spring in our backyard like we did in Costa Rica, but we do focus on proper water filtration with our reverse osmosis and then the static shield. That's where that really comes in as one of the most powerful tools to keep us in harmony, in sync, feeling our best energetically, mood wise, getting our best sleep. Rather than being afraid, just equip yourself with the tools that can truly help you to live a balanced. Thank you, mommy. Oh, thank you that can truly help you to live a balanced life. If you guys are interested in anything that we've shared, it's all linked below. Air doctor, our water filtration, even the seeds that we've planted and sown. If you wanna check out Static Shield, highly recommend using Eat Move Rest for 20% off. There's so much good stuff. Be sure to ask questions in the comments. We are always wanting to hear from you guys as well. So share tips and tricks, ask us questions. We'll be there to answer. So for dinner, we actually ended up using some of the sweet potatoes we harvested the night before and made an epic peanut butter cauliflower chickpea curry you guys this was so so delicious if you want this recipe and all of our other best ones go right now and download the eat move rest meal planner love you guys see you next week there are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better eat move and rest we're dusty aaron max olivia and Bo, and we're the stanzix we aspire to live a plant-centric faith forward healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it join us every week as we blend chop juice run lift ride and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance deeper connection and true happiness within 